Image editing just got better with this new AI model called IC Edit. The new IC model allows you to take any existing image and modify it with simple natural language instructions. The top example showcase how IC Edit can perform multiple consecutive edits on the same image while maintaining consistency and quality. And below, you can see a variety of other edits that you can do with impressive results and visual quality. For example, you can change it to a night from morning and add a fire burning at the same time. You can also replace an object, remove an object, and convert the image into a certain style. And below there are examples of edits that you can do on a single person portrait, like adding accessories and changing the hair color and the clothes at the same time. You can also change the background and the style to a watercolor painting. The name IC Edit might make you remind you of In Context LoRa if you're familiar. The difference is that the IC Edit specifically focuses on editing the image based on instructions, while In Context LoRa transforms the input into multiple related output images that share a consistent theme or narrative. But I found that In Context LoRa didn't really produce good outputs most of the time unless you put in a really good prompt. I kind of think of In Context LoRa as creating a variation from the original input, whereas IC Edit clearly edits the original image by adding objects, removing objects, or modifying something in the image. In terms of hardware requirement for IC Edit, the official workflow needs about 14GB of VRAM, but there are optimized workflows like the ComVUI non-truck version that can run on just 4GB VRAM. If we scroll down on the paper, we can see the evaluation of IC Edit against many other image editing models. If you look at the table right here, you can see that IC Edit did really well against other models on the Magic Brush test. This is a carefully curated data set created specifically for evaluating instruction-based image editing. It contains a pairs of original images, editing instructions, and ground truth edited results created by humans. On the benchmark, you can see that IC Edit achieved the lowest L1 score and highest clip score among all the other AI editor models. The L1 score measures the pixel level differences between the AI generated edited image and the ground truth image. So low value means AI model's result matches closely to the ground truth image. The clip score measures whether the AI model understood and correctly implemented the editing instructions. You can see that IC Edit also did really well on the MU Edit test, which is developed by Meta AI for their MU editing model. The performance is evaluated by measuring consistency between the source and edited image and how well the edit followed the instruction. On this benchmark, you can also see that IC Edit scored an impressive result against other models. There's even an evaluation that they did against commercial models like Gemini and GPT-40. You can see that IC Edit did really well against other commercial models as well. But what's kind of impressive about all these results is that they used only 0.5% of the training data and 1% of the parameters required by previous leading methods. This just means that they used a really small amounts of data and efficient training to make this model really good against other AI editing models. How IC Edit works is very similar to other in context LoRa. It uses the diptych format to show the two images side by side. On the left, there is an original image, and on the right is where the edited version will appear. And IC Edit leverages the Flux Fill model to create a very good result. Now let's look at how we can set up IC Edit and use the Comfy UI workflow. If we go to the original IC Edit repo, there's an official Comfy UI workflow that they released. If we click the Comfy UI workflow, there's a URL to the other GitHub link that has all the Comfy UI setup and the workflows. If we scroll down, there's an installation section for installing a custom node for IC Edit. You have two methods to install the custom node. You can go to the Comfy UI and Comfy UI Manager to git clone the git URL. If you are unable to install this on the Comfy UI Manager, you can go to Comfy UI Folder, go to the custom nodes, and right click and open it in Terminal and git clone the URL. In the IC Edit Comfy UI official repo, there's an example workflow folder. There are two workflows for it without the upscale and with the upscale. I'm just gonna use the no upscale workflow to see how that works. Let's load up the workflow on Comfy UI by dragging and dropping. And I'll go over which models you need to download for the workflow. The most important model you need to download is the IC Edit LoRa model, which will be loaded by this LoRa loader model. 
you just need to download this LoRa from the Hugging Face link. I renamed it to something like I see edit normal and put it in the LoRa folder. I put this Hugging Face link in the description below. The next important model as we discussed before is the Flux Fill model. You can download the Flux Fill model from this Hugging Face link and put it under the Diffusions Models folder. For the clip model, I'm using the T5XXL FP16 model since I'm not using the FP8 model for the flux fill. But if you are using an FP8 version of flux fill model, I recommend you use the FP8 version for the clip model as well. The workflow starts with the load image node and the source image node will be automatically created by the IC edit to create a diptych format, which is a two side by side images with the mask applied to the right side. This creates a before and after structure that the IC edit requires. For the instruction input, the in context edit instruction node is where you enter your editing instruction, like make her hair dark green and her clothes checked. For the IC edit LoRa to work properly, it needs a keyword called a diptych up to side by side, but this keyword is already embedded in the module, so you need to enter the specific editing instructions only, which is noted by the workflow here. In the model loading section, we're using the flux fill model, and we need to also load the IC edit LoRa model here as well. The important image processing happens inside the ICEF conditioning node, which combines the source image, mask, and conditioning information to create the final output. After the generation completes, the image crop node will just split this up for the final output. The diptych create node will pre-process the image properly by resizing it and applying the mask as well. Let's now try running the workflow with some example images. For example, I have a portrait of this girl and I'm going to make the instruction as make her hair dark green and her clothes check. And here is the result. You can see that in the result image, the girl does have green hair and they check her top. If we put the original image to the output result, you can see that the features in the original image is retained without losing a lot of quality. Like this necklace here is preserved and even the facial feature is relatively good. And the background seems okay as well. You can see that the output image is blurred a little bit. For this, you can use the ultimate SD upscale to upscale your image or any other upscaler models that you like. Next, I'm going to change the input image to Scarlett Johansson and I'm going to change the prompt to make it look like watercolor painting. And after waiting about 30 seconds, this is the result. It is indeed a watercolor style painting, but the result is completely fucked up. When the result is not good, the recommended approach is try a different seed and it often solves the problem. For me, I changed up the prompt a little bit and then queued up the workflow again. And that seemed to have fixed the problem. I did indeed get a new output image with the watercolor painting style on the original image. Next, I'm going to try to add accessory to this original input image. I tried a prompt that wears a diamond earring and golden ruby crown. And this is the result that I got. You can see that oftentimes it's not really perfect. For example, this crown's position is not very good and the shape of it is messed up. So for this, I tried in painting the crown position and the earring to try again. And this is the result that I got. It sometimes needs a couple of tries to make it perfect. I also tried closing the eyes of the original person's image and this is the result that I got. You can kind of see in the eyes area that the edited images is very smooth and you can clearly tell it is an edit, but it does get the job done. I also tried replacing the cat's image to a dog and I also tried removing the dog from the original image by saying remove a dog from the image. I'm quite impressed by this result because the image style is very consistent to the original image and none of the areas are very deformed. I'm also going to add an object to an empty sky by saying put a hot air balloon in the sky. And this is the result that I got. While I was testing the original workflow by the IC edit, I found another workflow that sometimes generated a better result. For example, I wrote raining in the sky. On the original image, it didn't really produce a good output, but on this new workflow, the result was pretty good. This workflow doesn't use the IC edit custom node and it creates a side-by-side -side image manually and doesn't use the ICEF conditioning node. I'll put both of these workflows in the description below so you can check both of them out. For example, on the new workflow, I said put a fire on the cherry blossom trees and it did put a fire on the tree on the new workflow but it didn't on the original workflow so you can try both of these and test out which produces better results after testing ic edit it does look like a very powerful and useful open source ai editing tool and i'm looking forward to improvements that they will make i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i'll be back with more ai contents and tools in the future thanks for watching